In this lesson, we are going to explore the workflow for creating an arc length dimension in Revit using Grasshopper. To demonstrate this, we have created a simple curved wall element and we will be working on creating the arc length dimension for both the outer and inner arc edges of the wall. So without further ado, let's get started. We will begin by referencing our curved wall into Grasshopper using wall container. After that, we use the element references component to extract the side faces as well as the edges of the curved wall. As we discussed in a previous lesson, to create an arc length dimension, we need at least one arc reference and two face or edge references that intersect the arc. So using the list item component, we extract the necessary references. In this case, the side faces of the wall are represented by indices 3 and 5 and the outer edge of the curved wall by index 0. Now it is essential to combine these references in the correct order. The first reference should be the arc edge, followed by the first and second intersecting face or edge. To combine these references, we have used the entwine component. Here we will input the arc edge first, followed by the side face references. Let's visualize this sequence result in the panel. First, we have our arc reference, followed by the side faces. The placement arc for the dimension is directly extracted from the wall using the offset curve component. If the offset distance is set to zero, the dimension will be placed exactly at the center line of the wall. Next, moving on to the dimension type, here I would like to mention one point. As the add arc length dimension component is specialized for creating arc length dimensions, it automatically selects the default arc length dimension type and generates the dimension, even if we do not use the type input. However, if needed, we can use this type container to access other arc length dimension types. Now let's connect our final inputs. And there we have it. Revit has successfully created the arc length dimension. Next, let's experiment by changing the references sequence to see what happens. As expected, we receive an error message stating references should be at least two and intersecting the ends of the arc passed. So let's restore the correct sequence. And as we can see, we regain our arc length dimension in Revit. This clearly shows the importance of maintaining the correct reference order. Additionally, we can measure other arc lengths. For instance, by changing the arc edge index to two, we can extract the inner edge of the wall, which allows us to measure the arc length for the inner edge. However, there is a limitation with this current workflow. We cannot measure the arc length for the center line of the wall. Although in Revit, we can easily select the center line of the wall and create the arc length dimension. In this workflow, the element references component only extracts the side faces and edges of the wall element. Although we can use the curve container to extract the center line, but when we connect it to the references input, we receive an error. The output result indicates that it is an arc-like curve, but the arc length dimension component requires this to be a valid Revit reference object. In upcoming lessons, I will show you how to convert this into a Revit reference object so we can measure the center line arc length as well. Thank you for following along and until next time.